Hello and a very warm welcome to the channel. I have good news. I no longer have COVID, which is nice. Uh, on, on balance, honestly not a fan. Now, I did a video a couple of days ago about a clueless Europeans guide to the NFL, which was a little, a little bit offensive. I mean, clueless is pushing it. I, I know all about the, the Yankees and the Red Sox. Um, I'm, I'm kidding, obviously they're NBA teams. Um, but I promised I would do another video if that, if that did well. I know it's done pretty well. So this is a clueless Europeans guide to picking an NFL team. And I would be really, really interested to hear which NFL team you think I should support and why. Um, it, there has to be some genuine reason behind it. I, I'm not just going to bandwagon completely on like the strongest team. And I'm also not going to just pick like the teams that mark themselves in the UK, like the Jacksonville Jaggers. So let, let, let me know below. Uh, I, I will I will genuinely try and find a team to sort of follow, by which I mean I'll check the scores every couple of months like I do for, for soccer. So <laughs> they, they, I think this should be interesting. Also, if you haven't subscribed, um, please do. We get a lot of new subscribers, so welcome on board. Uh, I've made it clear before that if any of my subscribers, I will gladly be a a, 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 a character witness for, for for any crime up to manslaughter. I think I've got, I've got a bit of a conscience to so not murder, but for up to manslaughter, if you need that court. Um, so yeah, subscribe, and it, it might keep you out of prison. Um, and without further ado, let's play the video. Not gonna lie, it's um it's quite quiet at the moment. <laughs> Is there something wrong with the volume? Man, am I mad? Uh, okay. I mean, now you know we're, that we're some former team needs to get the ball to that imaginary yellow line. Mm. This is all. Okay, it's gone quiet. Oh, yeah, Rick, Ricky Gervais. It's, um, I think there might be something wrong with the volume. Okay. Oh, but to everyone else, okay, it's this is exciting. Because you, as a non-American, are ready to embark on a journey of deciding which of the 32 teams are you going to root for for the rest of your life. And then, Yes, exactly. And that's a lot of pressure. I get it. And here's the thing. All 32 of these teams, they have their own charm, their own historic value. Each one deserves their own deep dive. But let's be honest, you probably don't have the attention span for that. <laughs> You're going to listen to me break down 32 teams? No. Maybe if I broke it up into a couple of videos, but not one sitting. Nobody got time for that. So we got to do sure. what we adults got to do. We're going to cut corners, which yes. means it's time to bandwagon. No shame. <laughs> no shame. Listen, don't be prideful. This is the same advice I give to my American brethren. Wherever you are in the world, odds are the team you root for sucks. They break your heart. Or at least they ruin your mood for the week. And when you were given the chance to pick any team, why on earth would you add more misery to your own life? by rooting for the Jets. You know mm. what I'm saying? And especially, I, mean, I, I cannot overemphasize how little I know about NFL. I know almost nothing. And even I know the Jets are terrible. <laughs> so. For a lot of my UK peeps who are watching this, you have to stay up to ungodly hours to watch them live. So if you pick the Lions and they go 2-15, and 15, that's not going to be enjoyable. You're just <laughs> simply not going to become a fan. And in the future, honestly, I'd love to break down teams. Go division by division. But for today, I'm just going to give you the top teams that I... Division by division, what's that? Because you, you don't have promotion and relegation, do you? Like, I mean, that that's how we have it in our in our football leagues um, or, or soccer leagues. You 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 kind of like the bottom team that get knocked down, the top teams come up from each tier, and it, it, it knocks down all the way to. So theoretically, a team could go from the Premier League to you know, the, the fifth or sixth tier of English football. I don't, I know that's not how the NFL works. I'm not sure how this division thing works. Perhaps we'll get into it later. I personally believe you should be bandwagoning for this season in the NFL. And my criteria for that is first, I'm going to give you the top five teams that Vegas thinks has the best odds to win the Super Bowl, at least mm. at the start of the season. I do actually know who won the Super Bowl as well. Well, well I, I know it's the L LA, LA something. Um, so it'd be kind of interesting to see if the, the LA something, is it LA Rams? LA Giant? No, no, it's not Giant. It might be LA Rams. It'd be interesting to see if they come up. And then on top of those, I'm going to add in some oldies but goodies. The Man United's and Liverpool's, if you will, of the NFL. And finally, for the weirdos in the back, I'll throw in some sleepers, okay? Thank you. Now, for all the British people watching, this is pretty simple. Most of y'all should root for the Jacksonville no! Jaguars. No, 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 we've been through this. I can't. Um, for, for two reasons. First of all, because that's clearly what um, it, we, we're supposed to do. And second of all, because I feel really bad if Jacksonville lose their team. Like, if, if the team just uproots and not just leaves the state, but, but leaves the country and, and moves across the Atlantic. If you've been like a Jacksonville supporter for all your life, that must be horrible. Uh, like, if that happened to UK football teams in 
well, well soccer teams, there would be riots. If you tried to pit, take a team from Manchester and move it to Leeds, that, you know, the city would burn down. Um, and I, 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 maybe your culture's a bit different of sports, maybe things are a bit different, but it seems really harsh to me. We went over this in the previous video, but the Spartan Nose version on why the Jaguars are an easy choice for all you Englishmen is because, more than likely, the Jaguars are moving to London, probably sometime within the next 10 years. And on top of that, they just drafted the football equivalent of Jesus. Sorry. And he kind of just noticed that player the national anthem. Looks like football Jesus. And my only reservation about this team was they didn't think they had a good head coach. And that has proven to be right. Like, if, if they did move to London, would they change their name? Because... Would it be the like London Jaguars? Because like Jaguars have got nothing to do with, with London or the UK. You, know, you, you get like Jaguars in Florida, right? Or, or, or at least that kind of region. Um, I mean, they, they have to change it to like the London Badgers or something. Uh, anyway, no, to say it seriously, let, let me know in the comments if, if you think it's a totally ridiculous proposition to have NFL teams outside the USA. I mean, do you think it will happen? Do you think it should happen? Um, I'll be really interested to know what you guys think. Because only after four weeks in the NFL, Urban Meyer is on the verge of being fired. <laughs> and it's not even football related. Yes, okay. they started 0-4, but the bigger issue is after the fourth consecutive loss to open up the season, he didn't even fly back with the team to Jacksonville. Instead, he <laughs> stayed in Ohio and went to a bar where he was filmed doing this. Oh, for you guys okay. who don't know, that, uh, that young lady, not his wife. Not his okay. wife. Even Please don't say it's his daughter. Please do not say it's his daughter. First, this was filmed in his bar where there's a mural of him and his oh wife peering God. down above everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's been reported that the players are now open. Oh, uh, that, that could hardly be worse. Okay, so when I said that I won't defend you in court for anything for, for, from uh, up to and including manslaughter, I will not defend you if you cheat on your wife in a bar which you are, which you also have a picture of your wife in. That that also crosses the line. That anything involving kids and, and murder are the other things I won't do. Only laughing at him and he is done. There's no recovering from this. It is no longer a matter of if but when Urban Meyer is gonna get fired and he's probably done in the NFL period. But luckily, he gets to go home and spend more time with his wife. Good luck with <laughs> yes. that, Urban. But all of this is great news for you, London fans, because by the time they move over there, they might actually have a decent head coach. And then you add on top of that, the insane advantage that you guys would have with the amount of jet lag, especially from teams from the West Coast. Teams from the West Coast struggled to play teams on the East Coast. Imagine the advantage that you guys would get when teams have to travel all the way to London. All these factors will probably make you guys competitive season in and season out. So That's a really interesting point, actually. Like, would it give London an unfair advantage? Like, could London win the Super Bowl just because every other team is so completely exhausted by the time they get to the city um i mean i don't know how the logistics work obviously they managed to do it for like a few games a year because they've been doing that for a while but to have a whole team um and to have like american teams coming over to the uk and then the uk team going over to america i mean i i don't know would it work again again please comment below i i genuinely don't know obviously this is something that serious people are thinking about for about 80% of you guys, this is this is probably the easy choice to go with. But for all the non-Brits here, or just people who don't like a team artificially forced yes. into you, well, exactly. what are the more organic options at the old farmer's market? Well, let's begin with the top five teams that Vegas has pegged as the odds-on favorite to win the Super Bowl at the start of the 2021-2022 NFL season. I'm sure this will be hilarious to look back on in February. <laughs> but first up, with the best odds, of course, are the defense. NFL champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And to everyone who hates Manchester United... Heck, I, I like these guys already, just based on their kits and their flag, both of which look super cool. This team is the team to root for. Why? Because this is the team that is owned by the Glazers. <laughs> yes, okay. these same Glazers who own Manchester United. The very same owners that Manchester United fans want burned at the stake. Those guys won a championship last year in arguably a more competitive league. And that's exactly why, if you are a Man United hater, you should root for Tampa Bay. Purely out of spite, just to point at them and say, hey, they won silverware in Tampa. Maybe the problem <laughs> isn't the Glazers. Maybe Man United are just shit. They might not be wrong. But also, Tampa Bay are like totes loaded. They have the Infinity Stone himself, the eternal Tom Brady. Even you. And I know, I know who Tom Brady is because we uh, we saw him in the previous video. He's the bloke that was 
um, streaking across the pitch, right? Please, and don't don't correct me. As far as I'm concerned, in my head, that is who Tom Brady is, and I don't want it ruined. I've probably heard of his name. I don't think there's much debate about it anymore. He is probably the greatest NFL player of all time. For comparison, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots are the two most winning franchises in NFL history. They both have six Super Bowls apiece. Tom Brady has seven Super Bowl wins <laughs> to himself. You heard that right. How is that even possible? Well, all six of the New England Patriots championships, Brady won it with them. Oh, his first wow. season in Tampa Bay, won another one. And this motherfucker... So the New England Patriots have just been like super dominant recently. I, which I did not know, um, or, or, or at least like within his career. He's coming back for eight, and what's scarier is he's probably going to get it, because this <laughs> team has no real weaknesses. They have talent three players deep in nearly every position, with now a bunch of talented veterans clamoring to sign for discount prices to ring chase with Tom Brady. They might have their hiccups here and there in the season, but they are going to be terrifying come playoff season. But really, if I was a neutral, I would actually pick the team with the second best odds this year to win the Super Bowl, and that is because they have a future younger GOAT in the making. Meet Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, you know him, the dude on Madden, the kid who does the no look passes. For those who don't know, this man is a messy level prodigy at his- So Madden's like a computer game, right? It's kind of like like um, like um FIFA, Pro Evo. His arm can do things we simply have never seen before. Now you pair that rocket arm up with an Olympic caliber sprinter in Tyreek Hill. And every <laughs> game just becomes a montage of Patrick Mahomes saying, fuck it, chuck it, and then having Wait, a trip- that was actually the Olympics. Did this, did this dude go from running in the Olympics to playing in the NFL? Because that is crazy impression, impressive, if so. Track me on the field. And let me tell you, Tyreek Hill doesn't lose many of them. <laughs> does not lose much. And if that Ooh, wasn't their main nice. threat, if you go ahead and you sit your safeties back and try to take that away, they also have an absolute mutant underneath. Meet Travis Kelsey, who just had the best offensive season ever for a tight end last year. This is as close to a completed infinity gauntlet as you get <laughs> in the NFL. Oh, and their coach, who looks like Dr. Robotnik, easily one of the most lovable chubsters in the sport. The man loves two things, football. I'm hoping that was around Christmas. If he, if he dresses up as about Santa Claus not around Christmas, it's suspicious, I'd say. <laughs> and cheeseburgers. Oh, you know he loves a cheeseburger. Look at the man. He loves a cheeseburger, too. After winning his first Super Bowl, after 33 years of coaching in the sport, how did he celebrate? I'm gonna go get the biggest cheeseburger you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and this all-American dumb- I used to watch like, an American show a little bit called Man Vs. Food, where they would eat like these incredible- well, it, it, it was just one guy would eat these incredible meals. Um, and I, I really liked it, because I, I love that kind of stuff. I, I, so I, I'm bonding with this guy already. Has put that glucose to- like The father I never had. Good use, because he is a schematic mastermind when it comes to drawing up plays for his generational quarterback. For every neutral watch of this, if you are a loyal supporter of your hometown team and you ever watched that team and thought to yourself, I wish <laughs> I had never been born, do yourself a favor, root for the Chiefs. Minimum, they're going to be entertaining as fuck for the next decade to come. And their city's defining factor is barbecue. Ooh. Who doesn't fucking love barbecue? What is there not to love about this team? What is there not to love about this city? Come on down to Flavortown. Now third in the Vegas odds to win the Super Bowl. You I, Americans, you, you guys do um, sport food so goddamn well. I mean, like that the, the, the sheer sight of that um, was it was it ribs or whatever it was. It, it, it it's made me want to bite off my own arm because I I really need to eat something now. So yeah, you you guys do sport foods much better than us. Well, this year are the Buffalo Bills. Now quick history lesson. Buffalo is located in bumfuck upstate New York, and its climate is most similar to Antarctica. <laughs> Their city's claim to fame as far as I can tell. They have really delicious hot wings. Ooh! Can't take that away from them. See, it's all about the food. And as for the team, historically, they're known as the guys who drafted O.J. Simpson. Before you <laughs> was a murderer. Before. That, that other than Tom Brady, that's probably the other, the other NFL player I've heard of, which is um, not, not good on my part. Oh, and they also happen to go to four consecutive Super Bowls. Pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Issue is, they happen to lose all four consecutive Super Bowls. It is the Ouch. greatest case of blue balls in human history. And despite all of this, nobody talks about any of that anymore. You know why? Because Bill's Mafia, their fan base, Fuck the Pats! All they freaking do now is just put themselves through tables. So much so <laughs> that they have flooded out every- Okay, no, there's no way I'm supporting this team because I've got to jump through a table. 
absolutely no way. Like I, I will do, uh, you know, a certain amount for my NFL team if if I adopt one. I will not jump for a table. Every single <laughs> other piece of content on the internet. This video will inevitably be drowned out fire. by a compilation of Bill fans going through flaming oh tables. And frankly, it is one of the most genius <laughs> strategies I have ever okay. seen. Okay. I, I, I'm not going to support um, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I'm not going to support the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> I've said out, out of 32 teams, I've narrowed it down to 30. And a fan base reclaiming their identity. Let me tell you, <laughs> they're going through a lot of tables this season because uh, their team going to be good. Their previously young and scattershot QB transformed into final form cell this last season, bringing all of his talents together in a near MVP caliber campaign. This young Buffalo, Josh Allen, has the biggest arm in the NFL and the size and strength to run over pretty much any defender in the league. So on his day, he's frankly unstoppable. He looks like he is leveled up and primed to go. Couple that with a criminally underrated coaching staff and one of the best secondaries in the league. No wonder Vegas likes it. But let's be honest here. If you choose to root for the Bills, win, lose, draw, you can see people go through tables. So all you <laughs> wrestling fans, you somehow have two teams to root for. God bless America. No. The uh, the fourth best odds to win the Super Bowl this year. I'm gonna need to take a drink for this one before this. Hold on. <laughs> Fuck. Um, the fourth best odds to win the Super Bowl this year are my beloved hometown San Francisco 49ers. Now, when you think of the Bay Area, Silicon Valley indubitably comes to mind. High tech, cutting edge, smart people, and that actually kind of fits the mold here. They have a new shiny stadium located not in San Francisco, but I gotta say, like the NFL stadiums, I, I know they vary a bit by team, but certainly the ones I've seen, the picture, they they all look absolutely insane. And also, like, because you, you guys have college football as well, which right, which is taken very seriously. And like, I, I've I've heard that some college football stadiums are just as big as NFL stadiums, or or, or possibly even bigger. Um, and and that's for like a game between two universities, like in in. In the UK, like a, a football game between two, two universities would probably get, as in like a soccer game or a rugby game or whatever, would probably get like a couple of hundred attendees at most. So it, it, it's crazy how, how seriously you guys take university sports. It's really interesting. Actually, in the heart of Silicon Valley, their young head coach is known as this like egghead super nerd who's on the cutting edge of offensive play calling. And they just brought in a state of the art dual threat athlete to be their QB of the future. They are. Yet another Ooh, stack roster ow. who were 10 minutes away from winning a Super Bowl two seasons ago, fuck you Mahomes, <laughs> but were ravaged by injury last year. Their current starting quarterback is Jimmy Garoppolo, who is widely regarded as the best looking man in the NFL. <laughs> oh, so good looking. But Jimmy GQ has not been able to stay healthy since that Super Bowl. So what did they do? They mortgaged the farm this offseason, essentially trading away okay. their most valuable draft picks for the next two seasons in order to move up in the draft and take... I'm going to have to understand how this draft picks thing works, because I, I know that the teams which do bad get like the top draft picks, but I, I don't get how this like trading works. Um, I, I, I'll have to look that up at some point, unless he get, comes on to it. Trey Lance. And while Trevor Lawrence might be the cleanest QB prospect in decades, Trey Lance's ceiling might be even higher. Just physically, he already is demonstrating one of the stronger arms in the wow. NFL. And passing isn't even his specialty. He made his hay in college running the ball. So I'm Asian. I like to do a little math. What happens when you combine an elite dual threat athlete at quarterback, the most important position on the field, with a coach known for innovative new offensive schemes? You add on top of that one of the best offensive lines in the league, three elite weapons at pass catcher, and this offense could become something the league has simply never seen before. But as a lifelong 49ers fan, I'm gonna be real with you. They've only stayed healthy one year out of the last five seasons, and they've already lost their Pro Bowl quarter, and they're down to their fifth string running back. It's game four! And Jimmy GQ got hurt again this week. <laughs> and as talented as his Trey Lance kid. Okay, this is more of a general point. Um, but like American football is really violent. Uh, like, I'm not, not in a bad way. I, I kind of like that. But I mean, it, it, the comparison is always rugby. So we kind of think, I, I think American football and rugby are kind of related. Um, but in rugby, you can only tackle the person with the ball. Whereas in American football, like... They seem to just go for each other. I mean, it, it, it's almost like a combination of rugby and wrestling, um, and and also armor. <laughs> so no, it it it's a, it looks really cool. Is he's still a rookie who didn't even he like played one game last Ooh. year because of COVID? I love this team. 
It's my favorite team in the world, my first love. And don't get me wrong, they're a good team. They'll probably make the playoffs. They're not winning a Super Bowl this year. But next season, when Trey Lance gets in there and he finally learns this offense, that's when you start bandwagoning on the 49ers, all right? But if you want to get a year head start, you know, it'll be pretty fun this year. And down to the fifth best odds to win the Super Bowl this year. And for some reason, I just find that all my British friends tend to naturally gravitate to this team. Okay. It's the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know why you guys like them. Maybe it's like the dreary disposition matches your <laughs> depressed, cynical souls. Yeah, if, if there's one comparison that I can get, but it's um, Baltimore in the UK. Never really thought about it that way before. But, um... You know, you, you pick right. They're an excellent choice. They're a fantastic franchise. Year in, year out, they always seem to have an amazing defense. They have a no-nonsense head coach. And they're all, always elite at, at identifying and developing young talent. If I could equate them mm. to a soccer team, they would be like the Borussia Dortmund of the NFL. And much like how Dortmund have arguably the most exciting young player in the world, the Baltimore Ravens also have maybe the most exciting player in all of the NFL. Let me introduce to you, Lamar motherfucking Jackson. Yeah, you might recognize him. He was on the cover of Madden not too long ago. And the thing that's special about him, yes, he plays QB and he can toss the ball. Not bad for a running back. But what makes him special, he's also one of the best runners with the ball in his hands in the league, period. And it's not just pure speed, but it's his rudeness in his cuts. His ability to change direction without losing speed might make him one of the best pure athletes we've ever seen at the position. God, it's it's crazy. Like, I think is this guy greased himself up. He's going through them like a gun. Just watch the highlights. I need to be like the Picasso <laughs> of words to properly describe yes. how this man takes souls every Sunday. Just look how surgical he is with these cuts. Humiliating world-class athletes on the team. In a league full of monsters, he might be the scariest one out there. If you choose the Baltimore Ravens, you'll be entertained, and honestly, they will not disappoint you. They're going to be a good bet to be pretty damn good every season. And those are the top five Vegas things you should be bandwagoning. But what if... I don't... I'm not sure I can choose one of them. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel that that's too... Too, too easy. You're... A classic man, if you will. Someone who enjoys what has stood the test of time. Shakespeare, Plato, Lisa Ann. <laughs> well, for you, old chap, let's get into the old firms. The Barcelona and the Real Madrids of the NFL. And Barcelona kind of fits what we're talking about in the Green Bay Packers, because both have the rare distinction of being fan-owned. In fact, the Green Bay Packers Hi. are actually the only fan-owned team in the NFL. I'm are, a co-owner of the team. They are the last small town team. That's really, that's really interesting. I mean, you, you, you do get some fan co-owned teams in um, the UK, but it's pretty rare and they tend to be pretty far down the league. So the, one, the ones I can think of, that there was like a, a break away from Manchester United because of the, the Glaciers, so FC United of Manchester or something they're called. Um, I think AFC Wimbledon might be partly fan owned. There, there, there's a few, but this, but it, it, it's like no team, big team, which is fully fan owned. Based in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and who knows where that is. But despite <laughs> being a small market team, they are technically the most successful team in NFL history. Really? They have won 13 league titles total. Nine of them came before the merger that created the NFL that we know today. And then they've won four Super Bowls in the now modern Super Bowl era. And actually, the Super Bowl trophy is named the Lombardi after the former head coach of the Packers, Vince Lombardi. They always <laughs> seem to have a production line of quarterbacks destined to be the league MVP at some point. And because of that, they always have a fun, amazing offense year in and year out. But more importantly, above all of this, the number one reason for anyone to root for the Green Bay Packers is you get to wear a foam cheese wedge as a hat. How do you know <laughs> if you truly lived? If you I mean that that's fortunate because I've been wearing a foam cheese wedge as a hat for years. And it's always been socially awkward, but apparently if I support this team it's now normal. Never cheered at the top of your lungs while having a giant block of cheese on your head. All men <laughs> die, but not all men truly live. And I say live moss. But for every mm. Barcelona, there's a Real Madrid and filling that role in the NFL of the Dallas Cowboys. Ah, they really yeah. are the Galacticos of a minute. So this is probably like so as far as I'm aware, sort of like in the UK, the most famous NFL team. Like if you if if you had to, if you ask someone on the street who knows nothing about American sports, name the NFL team. That's this is probably the one they'd go for. The glitz, the glamour, highly pampered athletes, big name signings, and owners who enjoy the spotlight a little bit too much. Yeah, the similarities <laughs> are uncanny. They have the moniker of America's team, and they have the success to live up to that name. Five Super Bowl titles in the 80s and 90s, but recently they've kind of been all sizzle and no steak. And the fan base is about as annoying as the Real Madrid fan base, actually. <laughs> and much like Real Madrid fans, 
every other fan base hates them. But if you want the classic NFL team experience... I'm getting really strong Manchester United vibes. Like, we're, we're really strong, like, a decade, 15 years ago. Um, to, to the point where every other team hates them. Uh, but have now declined massively and sort of becomes a bit a bit less a bit less controversial. I'm getting really strong main night vibes from these guys. It don't get more America than a cowboy. And Dallas is located in northern Texas and is best known as the city where the frozen margarita machine was invented <laughs> and also where the CIA murdered JFK. But really, yeah. the Dallas Cowboys are just a fun team to follow. Even when they I mean I'm glad we got that cleared up because for, for all this time I thought it was that Lee Harvey with Lee Harvey Oswald or something. Um, but anyway, now I've watched this video about the NFL, I know the truth, finally. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad I watched this video. Duck, they're always in the national conversation. Stephen A. Smith, the guy from All the Memes, his favorite thing in the world is to troll cowboy fans. It is <laughs> a circus, plain and simple. You have been warned, you know what you're getting into, but it's gonna be fun. And I'm talking about Dallas. But I can't, I can't support the American Man United, I'm sorry. It, the, these guys that I'm ruling out, along with the um, the, the Florida, oh, 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 the, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and the ones that have to jump through tables. But those are the three I've now ruled out. So I've got it from 32 to 29. But also this applies to the Cowboys. Now, while the Cowboys were given the moniker of America's team, in actuality, they were second choice. The title was originally given and turned down by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And honestly, they might be America's team when it comes to nationwide popularity. Truth is, more Americans can identify with the blue-collar working-class city of Pittsburgh than the glitz and glam of Dallas. Straight and simple. Pittsburgh is a metal lunch pail town. The name Steelers comes from the steel mills that built Pittsburgh, and their team reflects that. They're hard-working, blue-collar, and they will punch you in the motherfucking mouth. Their defenses through the generations have been legendary. I'm getting really strong, like, Leeds vibes from these guys. And this season is no different. They've also restocked with some of the best offensive weapons in the game. So what's not to love? Well, their offensive line can now protect the quarterback to save the lives. It doesn't <laughs> help that Big Ben is ancient. He's got an old man arm, and he's deteriorating faster than his pass protection. <laughs> this has to Poor be his God. final season. And unless he starts eating what Tom Brady is eating, wink, I don't see how this team gets very far. But if you root for them, you get to wave like a yellow towel, which um, seems fun. Yeah. They have excellent ownership, good coaching. I'm sure they're going to be good in a couple years from now. And, and those three are my classics, but I want to slide in a couple of sleepers. Thank you. The oh, they the they this is where I get interested. I can sense it. A couple of you guys got hipster energy, and you want something in what- I scream hipster, <laughs> as, as I'm sure you can tell. A little bit more edge, a little bit more intrigue. And for that, I got something perfect for you. I got one of the most unique franchises in the NFL. Let me introduce you to the former Oakland, then former Los Angeles, then former <laughs> Oakland again, and now Las Vegas. <laughs> what? <laughs> You remember this team? They were in the last video. Yes, the same team where Marshawn Lynch tried to light a blunt off a memorial torch. Yes. That same team. Their mascot is a pirate, and it fucking fits them all. Because historically, <laughs> they were known as a team that took in all the riffraff, the troublemakers, the outcasts, and they created this island of misfit toys. And this garnered them a reputation. A reputation for taking the rules to the limits, <laughs> let's say. Finding little advantages here and there to win. And all this was encouraged by the late great owner, Al Davis, whose famous mantra was Just win, Ben! They became... The so wait, like, I, I get, again, it's, it might be an American cultural sporting thing versus British cultural sporting, but when they moved from Oakland and from LA, were fans in Oakland and LA not really, really pissed? And did they then carry on supporting them when they moved to Las Vegas? Or, it, or did they essentially get like an entire new support base? How, how does it work? Because um, that, that's not really something we have over here. The and actually, to be honest, for that reason, I find them really hard to support because it, I, I, I feel like I'm stealing someone else's team. Wherever they started is where they belong, as far as I'm concerned. Um, now, I, I, I know American sports culture is a bit different over here. Bad boys in silver and black. And they just moved from Oakland to the city of sin. Viva mm. Las Vegas. Oh, and their new stadium? It's nicknamed the Death Star. Wow. And I mean that does look epic. Come on. Come <laughs> on. It's 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 pretty sick. You wish your team played here. Yeah, I, I, I do I do. So my um football soccer team is Southampton. Their stadium does not look that good. 
But look at the lie. Warning to tell you that they are usually dysfunctional, undisciplined, and they somehow find a way to win. And all this <laughs> is now just down the shitter because their head coach, he just had to resign. Because some old emails popped up that expose some wild language. <laughs> Let's play game. What type of heinous shit do you think this old white guy said in emails from 10 years ago? Was it A, good old racism, B, homophobia, C, sexism, <laughs> or D, all the above? Yeah, I knew that was coming. I knew it was going to be all the above. Yeah, no, that's um, fair, fair play. Get rid of him. Uh, yep. My man hit the triforce of being cancelled. And obviously, mm. this is a horrible look for the NFL, especially after the kneeling and then all the BLM stuff. This is just horrific for them. But for the Raiders, this is pretty on brand. Let's be honest. Now hey, listen, he's gone! And so, okay, know. okay, so I'm getting like maybe more Millwall vibes for the Raiders. Um, a, a little bit troublesome. You have to know that the next guy who comes in, there is a 70% chance that he's not racist. But anyway, <laughs> this threw a monkey wrench into my plans. I had to kind of scramble to think of another sleeper team, and honestly, it wasn't that hard. Because uh, after five weeks in the NFL, there's only one team who remains undefeated. Welcome to the desert. The Arizona Cardinals Ooh. are a sparkling 5-0, which is made even more impressive because they play in the NFC West, the group of death of the NFL. Their third-year okay. quarterback, Kyler Murray, is already probably the best dual-threat quarterback in the league. Now I hear you. Yes, Lamar Jackson is a better runner and Patrick Mahomes a better arm, but if you take about 90% of both of them and you combine them into a 5'9 frame, and you get the MVP of the National Football League through Week 5. Also, I gotta mention it. He's half Korean. Cool. God damn. Koreans are taking over everything. <laughs> Stop worrying about China, America. We blinked, and the South Koreans are about to run the world. And Kyler is just the next domino to fall. And I can't even hate, because he reps his half-Asian side, rocking a sweet custom Bruce Lee thigh pad. And let me tell you, this boy, he can flow, or he can crash. Impossible to grasp, and even if you can contain him in the pocket... I mean, the distance they throw is insane. Like, um, I mean, in, in, in rugby, they... You, you are kicking up the field for long distance, but the, the, the actual foes are crazy. He has a fighter fleet of high caliber wide receivers to throw to. And all of this isn't even why I think they're the best team in the NFC. It's their defense that makes them legit contenders. Let me put things in perspective for you newbies out there, okay? On average, if a D lineman gets 10 sacks over 16 games, that's a Pro Bowl season, okay? Chandler Jones on the Cardinals, he got five sacks in game so it, the, the pro bowl that's below the super bowl is it is that like a sort of second tier competition um i i, I so honestly when, when i said um i'm watching a clueless europeans guide i 100 percent am a clueless european i know almost nothing um about this other than that tom brady is a bloke who streaks all the time but yeah, so that, that, that bowl is below the Super Bowl, I'm assuming. I'll have, have to look that up. One. And the dude on the other side, Allen, he got three sacks just this past week. And then this offseason, they went and they added J.J. Watt, a former Defensive Player of the Year. Add all this up, and this is the best D-line in the NFL that no one is talking about. And I don't understand why. As you managed to get that sense, they just drafted two of the most athletic linebackers in the league. And their secondary, which was supposed to be a major weakness, is intercepting everything <laughs> thrown at them. So why the hell? I, this even a, I lie, these guys. A sleeper team. Why doesn't Vegas like them more? Well, the question mark is their head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. Okay, is he a racist? Is he a homophobe? Is he a sexist? And, um, the best way to describe him, and this is gonna be a little bit unorthodox, but bear <laughs> with me, okay? I just want you to watch him dance, okay? Just watch this man dance, and you'll understand everything that you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've seen it. Would you trust this man to win anything? And in fact, <laughs> he's never won anything significant. I, I think that's kind of endearing. Even at the collegiate level. And they started out hot last season too before fizzling out over the second half. And that's partially because teams figured out Cliff's scheme, and the other half was there are question marks around Kyler Murray's health. He's not the biggest dude, and just this past Sunday, he was already nursing something in his throwing arm. It's a long season. Made even longer with an extra game this year. The question mark is can they hold up 
And can their douche bro of a coach not get figured out again? The talent is all there? Honestly, who knows? A lot can change in the NFL. Very quickly. Look at the Raiders. They were undefeated two weeks ago, and just yesterday, they let go of a hundred million dollar head coach. And all of this is part of the entertainment of the NFL. It's chaos, baby. And I love it. We're only a quarter of the way through, and it's only going to get... I like, I've got to say, the spectacle of NFL is amazing. Uh, like, I mean, I mean the, the, the spectacle of the sport, I mean, it's, it's like a very lot going on sport. Um, and like, I mean, the, the, the kits are kind of crazy eye catching, but also like, all, all the other stuff you have around it. So like the, uh, you know, like parties, right? Tailgate parties, um, like halftime acts, like the, the, the spectacle they create is like so impressive. It's, it's, we don't really have anything on that level here. Juicier. And now for my final pitch, I'm going to go a little unorthodox here because this is a once in a decade opportunity for you as a new fan because this year was very, very special. The 2021 NFL Draft had five prodigy level quarterbacks drafted in the first round. For my soccer fans out there, each one of these quarterbacks has a Holland or Mbappe level potential to them. And with the new Zoomer generation being more about the players, I thought as a new fan, it might be kind of fun to tie your horse to one of these chosen five. So for part three of this clueless guide to the NFL, I will be profiling this possible golden quarterback class. I'm going to go through each one of these five prodigies, tell you the pros, their cons, how they've been looking so far this season, and maybe for you as a new fan, you could root on for one of them as well. Now, if I didn't mention your favorite team here, please don't get all butthurt in the comments down below. Instead, be productive. No, get all butthurt in the comments. It's much more fun and interesting. Pitch your team to the people. And once again, I'd love to go into all the teams in the future. But for now, I thought it was best to not overload the noob. <laughs> so before I go, I know this is annoying, but please follow me on Instagram at Be Modest because I got to get my shit up to 10K. Yeah, go, get that. seriously. Oh, this guy produces really interesting videos. So go, go follow him. Um, obviously, the original video will be in the description as always go, go go show him some love i found that really interesting um but honestly i i, I can't make a decision like i i've ruled a few teams out i've ruled out the ones that jump through benches and i've ruled out the jaguars and i've ruled out the dallas cowboys um but beyond that i'm, I'm really not sure and, and possibly ruled out oakland because they're apparently a bit on mill <laughs> But I, yeah, so I, I, beyond that, I really don't know. I mean, comment below, who, who do you think I should support? There has to be like a, a legit reason behind it, as I said at the very beginning. Um, so it, 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 there has to be like some sort of justification. But no, I, I, I will possibly at some point choose a team um, and <laughs> check their score now and again. But anyway, guys, it's been, it's, if you got this far, well done. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. Um, I mean, all the usual YouTube stuff, please like, subscribe, all that, and I hope to see you again. Thanks.